For RCR TV, I'm Sean Kinney, and I want to talk to you a little bit today about innovation and some of the technology companies that are bringing proprietary products into the telecommunications industry. A few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to travel out to San Jose, California for the Open Compute Project Summit. Open Compute Project is a nonprofit that was founded by Facebook as a way to facilitate collaboration across the data center hyperscale industry. Since then, there's been a lot of interest from telecom companies, including Nokia, Ericsson, AT&T, Verizon, a lot of heavyweights that really have seen how much they can improve their processes by collaborating on the R&D end. But let's get back to innovation. Bell Labs uh, has been around for uh, almost 100 years, and there is a lot of things that we can learn from the way Bell Labs has operated, especially regarding open innovation and open uh, openness regarding industrial and academic borders. This is Peter Windsor. He's an IEEE and a Bell Labs fellow. There is one very good example for the spirit of Bell Labs and that's reflected on the slide you see here. That shows the famous horn antenna of Crawford Hill which was built uh, in 1960 to support the very first telecommunication satellite experiments. Satellites were invented by Bell Labs, telecommunication satellites, and first launched to, um, to do communications by Bell Labs back then. And in order to do so, to do the communications from ground to satellite to ground, uh, relay communications, they had to build uh, big horn antennas on the ground. Peter's talking about the Holmdel horn antenna, which was built in 1959 to support a passive satellite communications experiment being run by NASA called Project ECHO. The Holmdel Horn was also used as a radio telescope. So they saw, for example, that there was cosmic background radiation coming, microwave background radiation, and they couldn't explain it. So scientists, uh, Bob Wilson and Arno Penzias, they very carefully uh, measured that background radiation, and they could only reconcile it with theory um, by looking at the Big Bang Theory, and uh, the Big Bang Theory back then was very heavily disputed, but with that uh, experiment that showed exactly how much background radiation there is from free space, they could prove that the Big Bang Theory was correct, and from then on we know what the origin of our universe is. In 1978, uh, Penzias and Wilson won the Nobel Prize in Physics for their discovery which wouldn't have been possible without the data generated by the Holmdel Horn. All of that coming out of a telecom project, which was called Satellite Communications. And that really captures what Bellex is all about. Think beyond. The point here is that removing these barriers between researchers can really set the stage for groundbreaking science, which uh, Peter points out is fundamental to innovation. Bell Labs always took the stance that it is important to extend general scientific knowledge because that will lead to many things unexpected that will create other industries. So in this case, a NASA experiment around satellites cross-pollinated innovation into the science of cosmology to a, a really impressive result. And you know, that's what Open Compute Project is really all about. That's taking the lessons learned by the hyperscale data center experts and for the purposes of our look, applying them to the telecom industry. So what's the driver of this movement? Um, I'd say the overall driver is for sure efficiency and cost savings, but also driving innovation at a much greater speed. That's Daniel Brower. He's a chief architect of cloud infrastructure for Deutsche Telekom, and he's going to ask his colleague Ken Duell from AT&T if he agrees with the reasoning. Um, those three factors are the, are the same with us. I think uh, in, in our case, it's a matter of survival. Our customers are expecting services on demand anywhere they may be, and uh, we're finding that the uh, open source platform, open source software provides us a platform to build new services and deliver it with much, much faster velocity. 
So you heard it's a matter of survival, and you've got to understand carriers are under tremendous pressure to scale their networks to keep up with the tremendous demand from users for mobile data. And a lot of that's being generated by mobile video. So when that's the setting and when that's the market demand, they're forced to invest. They're forced to invest in data centers and racks and in servers. And this is where white box hardware comes into play. Previously, you would be purchasing name brand equipment from a company like Dell or HP, but now operators are turning to this commodity hardware, which is what the Open Compute Project uh, allows to be shared. When we think of white boxes, the hardware ecosystem with system on a chip is maturing very quickly, and we're very pleased to see that progress. Uh, the challenge is the software, especially uh, network OS software, to run on these uh, systems with WAN networking features. And so uh, one of the things we hope in participating in this forum is to create enough of an ecosystem to help develop these uh, network OS uh, software platforms. I was talking to one of Ken's colleagues from AT&T during Mobile World Congress, and he was explaining to me how traditional mobile carriers are really trying to reinvent themselves as software companies as they embrace NFD and software-defined networking. And that's something that Mahmoud El Asur from Verizon picks up on. When you think about the entire networking space, historically, the focus has been more on speed, and the focus has been more on running different, I would say, protocols like data and video and voice on the same networks. And now, uh, now what's exciting in the telecom industry is and then networking industry is everything becoming more software. And software basically is the same, everything in network becomes more like an app. And, uh, and that's very exciting. It allows us to kind of unlock and de-aggregate uh, our network components and allow us to accelerate the speed of innovation, allow us to use white boxes and, uh, and then innovate in the software and, uh, and create different use cases for our customers. So that's just a brief look at how the Open Compute Project is really fostering this notion of dropping the proprietary walls to drive time to market, to drive collaboration, and to drive innovation. So thank you for joining me on this episode of HetNet Happenings, and we'll see you again soon. HetNet Happenings is a production of RCR TV. To reach Sean Kinney or to suggest a show topic for HetNet Happenings, you can reach Sean at skinney at rcrwireless.com. On Twitter at Sean Kinney RCR. To find out more about the latest in HetNet and all things wireless, dig into rcrwireless.com.